there's all this information. People are driven by emotions. They're scared. They don't know much about China because most people haven't actually been there. And so a story like this pops up and people get uh, get uh, nuts, which is why you have prices today where they it are. Could be, it could be the Internet then. It could be that we just know more and then that affects market psychology and that you know becomes self-fulfilling. It, it, yeah. The fundamentals don't have to have changed to where it actually affects us. Yeah, there's been some change in those too. But, yeah, I think it's the acceleration of information if you want to sound fancy about it. But it's, uh, it's that and people, it just, people have a hard time digesting information they're not comfortable with. There's a thing called cognitive dissonance. Uh, and among the site guys, that's what's going on right now. It just scares people. But there are fundamental things happening. They're just not happening in the way it's typically represented. It's sort of the reverse. Uh, and, and Andy, looking at, at the effects of, of this commodity crash, and when you, you know, some of it's supply, obviously, with oil. Maybe it is with copper. Maybe we built too many plants. I, I know. But a lot of it seems to be that China on the margin made a, made a big difference. A, and... I mean, that is sort of what, what has caused this, isn't it? That they're no longer, they, they have too much capacity over there, and they built, they built enough, or they made enough cement for an entire century of growth in the United States in, in the last year or something. That's coming home to roost, isn't it? Uh, that increased uh, uh, about 300 percent. Now, in dollar terms, that's uh, you know, about... Uh, 20 trillion U.S. dollars. That, that has been the source of growth for the global economy in the last seven years or so. You know, it, it directly or indirectly, uh, the, the companies, the multinational companies, have become very dependent on China for profits. So even though that uh, China's effect on the U.S. economy directly may be limited, but uh, it, it, it will cause a profit recession for the multinational companies for a couple of years. So all you got to think about, Andy, is... You know, you think Apple immediately, and um, you know that's where the that's where the growth, the additional growth on iPhones, were dependent on a certain uh, level of growth in China. So even if it is just at the margin, it can affect the actual results as well as the psychology. Well, you look at it, even for industrial companies like like uh, uh, Dow Chemical or Prax Air. No, they, they, they make like a, about 20 percent in, in China. So, so I think the effect is big. So it, it takes time for people to digest. And you know, the market does not understand China well. So there's a panic element uh, involved. But the, the real effect is, is, is also significant. If you look at the German car companies, half of their profits are from China. And, and uh, the, uh, the U.S. auto companies also, they, they, a big chunk is from China. So it, it's going to have an effect. I mean, John, we, we know that a couple of years ago they... The, the stimulus there may have been misdirected, right? Didn't they go on a boom? But you're always a China well, bull user. They drove it into infrastructure, right. which like, means they built a lot of steel and subways and things like that. That stuff also is good for productivity. So it's, it's, a little, it's better than just handing out checks uh, in the way we typically do it here. But there's lots of different ways they can affect us. You know, one way, when the dollar gets strong, when people are scared, that lowers reported profits for the S&P. Now, that's a temporary effect. It's a one-time effect. But it's, uh, but it's true. But China is more than one number. It's not just GDP. Manufacturing in China is in trouble. The service sector is doing much better. And the service sector is where people earn their income. So income growth in China is actually still 7-8%. Uh, and uh, strong, that's the guys who buy the Apple Watches. So the consumer sector in China is way better than the industrial sector. But the real story out of there isn't their growth dropping hurting the world. It's the capital flight from China hitting both the currency and the stock markets in the world. That capital flight, we tell the story, the Fed raised rates, everybody's pulling their money out. That's the foreign investor. The real money coming out of China now is an internal Chinese investor who's noticed that this government is getting more repressive and is moving money outside. It's buying the houses in Vancouver and New York and so forth. Yesterday, the Treasury put new rules on for cash real estate transactions. That's to capture some of those Chinese buyers coming out. So capital flight is the big story, and that's what hits the markets. It's not the GDP or the exports. So we're not going to have a recession, but we are going to have a big currency issue here.